Hello, in this video we're going to go over uh, problem A4 from Putnam 2022. So here's uh, what it says. The question says suppose x1, x2, xn and so on. So it's an infinite sequence of random variables or real numbers between 0 and 1 that are chosen independently and uniformly at, uh, at random. Then they take the sum xi over 2 to the power of i, i equals 1 to k, where k is the least positive integer such that x1 is le xk is less than xk plus 1. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then uh, k would be infinity. Find the expected value of s. Okay, so a few thoughts when I looked at this problem. First of all, what does this mean that it is the least positive integer that xk is less than um, xk plus 1? It means x1 is greater than or equal to x2, greater than or equal to x3, greater than or equal to all the way to xk, and this is less than xk plus 1. So we are looking at all of these <clears throat> that um, are in decreasing order. So until it becomes increasing, we do include that in the sum at. That's the first thing, just kind of like an understanding of what the uh, question is asking us to do. The second thing that came to my mind is that this um, is a very good place to uh, use linearity. So if you recall, one of the properties of expected values, and since I know some some students who have experience with math competitions from high school, they don't necessarily um, know much about expected values and probabilities. So I will talk a little bit about that before getting to the solution. So expected value is linear, which means if I have two random variables, expect, expected value of ax plus by is going to be a expected value of x plus b expected value of y. Okay, so um, so therefore I can write down expected value of s as the sum i equals 1 to k expected value of xi over 2 to the i. Um, but if you think about this one a little bit, you realize that this is actually not correct. This is not a valid equality because this k is changing. So that's the main reason I can't really use linearity because the number of summands keeps changing. Okay, so before I, I handle this issue, let me remind you a little bit about what is expected value and then we will get to the um, how to handle this issue. Okay, so let's assume you have a random variable. So what is a random variable? It's a function from sample space to R. So this is called a random variable. It assigns a number to every event, every outcome. Um, rand we have two different types of random variables, discrete and continuous. Discrete are the ones that the random variable assigns either a finitely many or countably many values. And continuous would be if random variables, random variables that the um, image, sometimes called the support, is let's say an interval. For our uh, purposes in Putnam, you'll just see these two types of things. Um, expected value can be evaluated using, um, if you have a discrete, if you look at the discrete case, which means um, x takes on these values, values lowercase x1, x2, etc. Then uh, the function f is called the uh, probability density function or PDF probability density uh, function or PDF if f of xi is probability that x is equal to xi so each of these individual probabilities would be f and f of uh, everything else would be zero. So this is the case when you have a um, discrete probability, uh, discrete random variable. The case of the continuous case, um, 
probability density function is seen as a function that satisfies this proper property that the probability of x being between a and b is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx so this is called probability density function if you want to find out what probability density function is um, one way of doing that would be to take the derivative of probability x between some number a and x and I'm assuming these probabilities are um, differentiable. So the uh, density function becomes uh, PDF, the uh, probability density function becomes a continuous function. Okay, so I'm, I'm making that assumption that it is continuous. And as, a, as I said, for all practical purposes for Putnam problems, it would be the case. So if you find the uh, PDF, then you can find out what the expected value is using this formula. It's the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x f of x dx. So this is the expected value. And as I said, the main property of expected values is that expected value is linear. So expected value of a i x i from 1 to n is sum of a i i equals 1 to n expected value of x i. If we go back and look at what we had here, as I said, the issue was this k is changing. So how can we fix that? Um, a kind of a standard method would be to keep um, the sum as an infinite sum and replace the rest of them by zero. This is fairly standard in solving these kinds of problems, which means you're going to end up with an infinite sum. But do we have linearity for infinite sums? The answer is yes, as long as uh, certain conditions are satisfied. For example, if all of your random variables are non-negative, you do have that condition. So this one is called linearity. And we also have expected value of sum of xi. i equals 1 to infinity is sum of expected values. i equals 1 to infinity. And this is provided that every xi is greater than or equal to uh, zero. This is called monotone convergence theorem. Okay, so now we are going to actually write down a solution given that, um, as I said, what we do is we're going to just define, the, um, define new random variables that take on xi when it is non-zero and zero when uh, the condition fails to be satisfied, the condition of being decreasing. So this condition that I have here. Okay, so let's just start writing down the solution and we'll talk about how to, in fact, find that probability density function and then how to integrate that x times f of x. Okay, so first we're gonna define a random variable, define um, so I guess for every j, yj by xj and 0, if x1 is greater than or equal to x2, greater than or equal to xj, and this would be otherwise. For all j. Okay, so because of the way it is defined, that we defined it 0 everywhere else, um, expected value of uh, s, in fact s would be the sum of yj over 2 to the j, j equals 1 to infinity. Now that we have um, fixed the issue with um, with um, having different number of uh, summands, we can work out and find out what expected value of uh, yj is. So by the um, monotone convergence theorem, expected value of s is the sum of expected value of yj divided by 2 to the j, j equals 1 to infinity. So now we need to find out what the expected value of yj is. In order to find expected value of yj, we need to find out its probability density function. So we need f of t. 
So what is f of um, um, f of t? So f of t typically is what's like the probability, the instantaneous probability that x that y j is equal to t. So informally speaking, let me put it this way. Informally speaking, it is the probability. This is informal uh, that y j is equal to t. So what does that mean? It means um, if I take yj and yj is equal to t, it means xj is t and xj is less than or equal to xj minus 1, less than or equal to, because that was the condition, x1. So we need to have that condition and xj must be t. So what's the chance of these x1 through xj minus 1 to be, um, to be more than um, xj? The probability of that for each one of them, the probability is 1 minus t. So there's probability of 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1. This is the probability that all of them are more than t. However, we also need them to be in a specific order. There are j minus 1 factorial possible permutations for them. So the chance of them being in that particular permutation is 1 over j minus 1 factorial. So it looks like intuitively this would have to be this quantity. So uh, the probability density function would probably be 1 minus j, 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial. Okay, so now um, how do we in fact prove this one? Well, in order to find the probability density function, we need to integrate this and find out the probability. So again, this is like informal. This is not quite accurate. So probability that yj is less than or equal to t, this is the one that I need to find. This would have to be the integral of f. And what is the integral of f? If I integrate that, I get 1 minus t to the power of j over j factorial times negative 1 and then plus a constant. So it would have to be something along the lines of um, something minus a constant minus 1 minus t to the power of j over j factorial. Okay, so now this this took me a little bit to make it regress. I, I figured that the uh, probability density function would have to be 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial, but to make it regress, um, it took me a little bit. And there might be like a theorem that allows you to uh, justify that faster, but um, I'm going to do it like in an elementary method. And once I saw that, once I saw the 1 minus t to the power of j, I realized I probably have to use some sort of um, complementary probability. Because 1 minus t is uh, the probability that something is more than t. So that way I could figure out what we need to do. Okay, so let's figure out what's the probability that um, yj is less than t. So let t be between um, 0 and 1. Excluding 0. Because the for t equals 0, there's a probability that I don't... And need to worry about. It's just the bottom one. This is a constant number and when you take the derivative of that constant disappears. Okay, so let's start with t inside 0, 1. Probability that um, yj is less than t or equal to t is equal to, so there's two possibilities. Either yj is equal to t, so probability that yj is equal to t, equal to, I'm sorry, 0, plus probability that yj is between 0 and t. So probability that yj is equal to 0 is a constant. We can ignore that. That's like the bottom part. That's the part, this one. We can ignore that. The one that we need to look at is the top one. Okay, so let's look at the probability that yj is between these two. In order for this to happen, we need this yj is less than or equal to t 
and greater than or equal to zero if and only if these things happen. First, xj is less than or equal to t, and second, xj is less than or equal to xj minus one less than or equal to x1. So these are the things that need to happen. Okay, so now at this point I will have to find out what happens if I'm, I'm going to look at the complement of this one. So in order for this to happen and this to happen, I need um, I cannot have all of the values to be more than t. In order, let me put it this way, the probability that at least one of y1 through yj or x1 through xj Um, does not exceed t is 1 minus 1 minus t to the power of j. So if at least one of them does not exceed that, so probability that x1 through xj are all more than t is equal to 1 minus t to the power of j. So that means that's a complement. Now, I, I found out the probability that at least one of them does not exceed t. Now, I need them to be in that specific order. Since um, there are j factorial permutations of j numbers and We'd like these J numbers to be in a specific order. The chance of that happening is one over J factorial. Thus, probably that yj is less than t or equal to t and greater than zero is equal to one minus one minus t to the power of j divided by j factorial let me review this again to just make sure we are clear on what's going on here so i would like one of the x1 through xj's to be less than t so the complement would be one minus t to the power of j so that means the priority of that happening is 1 minus that. Then I need them to be in a particular order. I need the xj to be less than or equal to xj minus 1 all the way to x1, which is why the priority is this way. This. Thus, if I differentiate this, probability of yj being less than or equal to 0, greater than, uh, greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to t, that is equal to 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial which is what we guessed at the beginning um, this is the probability density function for yj therefore I can find out its expected value expected value of yj is equal to integral value of yj which is t times 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial dt um, from 0 to 1. Okay. Now you could do that with a u sub. However you want to do it, I will avoid the u sub because this is basically what I'm going to do. Um, I can do it as 1 minus 1 minus t and everything is now in terms of 1 minus t over j minus 1 factorial dt this is the integral from 0 to 1 1 minus t to the power of j minus 1 over j minus 1 factorial minus 1 minus t to the power of j over j minus 1 factorial dt 
Okay, now we're going to integrate. This would be 1 minus j to the power of 1 minus t to the power of j over j factorial, and it has to be negated, and then plus 1 minus j to the, 1 minus t to the power of j plus 1 over j plus 1 times j minus 1 factorial from 0 to 1. So plug in 1, we get 0. Plug in 0, you get minus 1 over j factorial, but we have to negate that. So we get 1 over j factorial plus 1 over j plus 1 times j minus 1. Negate that, you get this. Take the common denominator. Common denominator is j plus 1 factorial. The first one, numerator, becomes j plus 1. The second one becomes j. So that would be 1 over j plus 1 factorial. Okay. So we seem to be almost there. Okay, therefore, if I take the um, expected value of uh, S, I get expected value of S, I get the sum J equals 1 to infinity. Uh, this quantity, 1 over J plus 1 factorial, divided by 2 to the power of J. Now, if I write down the numerator as 1, one half 2 to the power of j plus 1, that looks like a very similar to the um, power series for, let me write it down this way. This is the power series for e to the power of x. If you change the index, that might make it more clear. So this is the, I'm going to replace j plus 1 by j, so that j plus 1 goes from 2 to infinity. And this is 1 half to the power of j divided by j factorial. Now this is e to the power of 1 half, except it is missing the first two terms. It is missing the 0 term, 1 half to the power of 0 over 0 factorial. And it's also missing the first term, the um, 1 half over 1 factorial. OK, and this becomes 2 times uh, square root of e, and then multiply that out, you get um, 2 times 1, and then, so minus 3. So this would be our final answer. Okay, so if you're interested in continuing with math competitions, and spe specifically Putnam, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.